All right, so what I've done is uh, in the, between the video break here, just to put in some notes and just so you guys don't have to watch me kind of type these out. I'm just going to cut through them. Um, I added about five lines of code uh, to really kind of, I think, polish things up. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do is in our pick review did select row function, we're going to come down here and uh, insert in defaults.set selected num saying. So whatever, basically, the index number of the uh, saying that you've selected. Uh, we're going to set this value for a key of last saying for, and then I'm going to combine that with whatever particular emoji uh, we've selected, okay? So ultimately, it, you'll end with something like this, last saying for phase one, right? So there's a last saying for part, uh, last saying for phase two. So we're going to start to save, you know, what saying you left off with, okay? So that's... One of the first things we're going to do, so and then on your end. Uh, and then I'm just going to cut, I'll just go through these in order now. So uh, in our initial setup, we're going to uh, return the emoji slot to the most recently edited um, index number, right? So uh, when our intro picker first loads up, we're going to select row, selected num, and so it's going to spin the wheel uh, to whatever you left off at. Now, the first time you run the app, it's, you know, selected num is just going to equal. Uh, it's default value of, of zero, so it's just going to stay at where it's at. But uh, this will help when you kind of go back and forth between, you know, the emoji picker and the intro screen so that um, you, you just basically go back to wherever you left off at. Okay, that's kind of an easy one to understand. Uh, all right, now when we set up our uh, emoji mode, uh, I put a little bit here, set the sayings image to whatever one was most recently selected for a particular emoji. Okay, so our selected num saying now uh, and again, this goes back to what we just did, is uh, is going to be whatever that number most recently was for the emoji that we have selected. Okay, so uh, that's going to factor in when we add our saying image, and it's going to bring up, it's going to show us in the saying image the most recent, you know, whatever we left off with, right? Uh, and then to kind of fur further finesse things, we're going to spin our uh, picker component wheels uh, for both uh, column uh, or component zero and one, the first and second, uh, to whatever the selected num is and the selected num saying is. And continuing on, um, and this is going to right back where we started again. Uh, this is what I let off, let off the video with. But uh, this one gets a little bit more interesting. So uh, now when we uh, are changing our component wheel, and maybe I should just uh, publish this. Now when we... Um, when we, when we select a one of our emojis, one of our four ones, right, uh, we're also going to spin the <laughs> second column, our saying image, back to the most recently saved saying for it. So, well, you can really kind of think of the emoji column as a sort of like save slots. Uh, in this way, it's... Um, it's gonna. I, I think it feels a lot more natural, and I, I mean, you know, this one you might consider optional. It just depends on kind of how you want to approach um, building these um, these, you know, your kind of saved uh, uh, the versions of these guys. So watch this. I'm gonna go over here to caption emoji, and you know, now if I go back down to this one over here, oh, let's see, let's move this around, right? So let's go over to this guy, right? Change him to. Okay, all right, so that's gonna be our okay thing. Move it over this way, go back to this one. And then when I go back over here, it's still showing me okay again, right? So basically, you know, these are essentially just sort of save slots inside of here. So they're always gonna go back to what you had them at before. It looks like I cleared out the app. There we go, so just to kind of prove that this is working. So go back over that way. And then, and so without this though, what could happen is, you know, you could change the, you know, LOL to this, and then once you move this around, you, you would still keep that LOL in there, all right? So, you know, it depends on if you like that functionality over what, you know, what's going on currently with it, right? So, anyway, uh, and then again, let's go and uh, let's send our creation over here. Okay, and again, it... Uh, well, that was the first lot anyway, so just defaulted to putting us back to that one. But uh, if we were to go and caption this guy, right, and then send your creation, yeah, it should 
put us back at that second one over there. Uh, now there is one thing that might kind of feel like a bug, um, and, and that's this. So for example, you'll notice that this third slot over here doesn't look like what this is right now, right? Uh, and that's because uh, I, obviously when I left off or I made those changes over here, I didn't uh, save a new screenshot for it, right? So the, the saving of the screenshot for that picker wheel in the intro screen only, uh, you know, gets new data when you go over here and you click send your creation. Uh, so what we might want to consider doing is putting in or calling the fun function that saves that screenshot when you minimize so basically you save your last kind of state right, when, you go, when you kind of step back out of that. Now, that's not gonna save it, um, you know, uh, if somebody were to just close out, like hit the home screen on their phone, but it'll at least save it more often, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So skip down to your did transition to statement and uh, we'll crowbar this into uh, this little section right here, right? So we're leaving the emoji mode and we'll do this before we remove all the items from the emoji mode and, and call our uh, initial setup again. So uh, let's go and find our create image for message function. And if you remember, well, this is kind of really what calls over here. This one, we don't need to change. It's, it's uh, I was just kind of jumping toward it, but uh, we will call something similar to this. So let's just go ahead and copy this part out and uh, let's, I'll come down here and just do this sort of around the did transition to statement. So we'll just say function save screenshot for wheel. Okay. All right, we'll paste in what we've got. And we don't need to do anything with the, the, uh, the conversation. So we'll take that part of it out of it. And we don't really need any of that, do we, right? Okay. So, uh, just again, we're gonna uh, create image data. Well, first off, we're calling our create image for message again. So it's gonna return to us an image. And then we're gonna save out our um, image data as data, set the defaults to that uh, for the currently selected, uh, you know, whatever that is, phase one, phase two, phase three, plus uh, screenshot and then there's really nothing else to it, right? So we just take our save screenshot for wheel. Uh, my only concern here would possibly be that um, maybe things don't get saved quick enough, you, you know, to because we are removing things right away afterwards. But I, you know, it's, it's a computer and it moves pretty fast. So let's see. Uh, basically, worst case is we could always like, you know, kind of off delay this by a fraction of a second on a timer. But I think it should be all right. So let's try it out. Okay, so let's go and uh, and let me put it this way: if the simulator can can you know do it in time. I'm sure your phones can. All right, so let's put Fab over here, and let's uh, let's kind of rotate this guy back so he looks a little bit more normal. So at least we can kind of leave the state for this. Uh, there we go, and close it out. And sure enough, okay, so that uh, that definitely did save it. Uh, one thing you might want to consider doing is uh, clearing the um, the background color as well, because remember we just have this white background color here, but it might look a little bit better if we just, you know, since you don't have, a, have another type of background in there, it might just make it clear. Um, and let's go back in here again. Da, 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 da. Okay, so one thing that would be really nice would be um, if you, uh, if you were able to select which one of these you wanted to edit without having to kind of go back into the wheel and do anything to it, because you know you see what happens when you play around with the wheel, it kind of you know adds these things back in here and sort of you know, does those animations again. Uh, so you know if we can just touch down to select these guys, that's obviously uh, you know going to be a much better experience for the user. So let's do that. So, you know what, while I'm thinking about the pan gesture recognizer, which is where we're headed, uh, I believe I forgot to do something. Let's do this. Uh, let me find, yeah, inside of here, I'm gonna, we need to write self.view.remove gesture recognizer pan rect. And we might get a, 
might want to force a value out of that. No, I guess not. Okay, yeah. That's just, um, gosh, I'm surprised we didn't see a crash or anything like that before. I guess there was nothing in here that was really a disaster if that recognizer was still running uh, in, in our intro screen. And why would that be the case? Hmm. Probably because there was no image to, <laughs> to transform. Uh, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, yeah. All right. What we're gonna do is um, let's spend a little time in the if sender dot state equals dot began, and this is where we'll figure out where we're touching. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a CG point uh, variable. Uh, Let's see. Actually, we've already got current location, so we could just go to location. That's that's a simple, simple enough variable name. So this will be um, CG point. This is gonna be the location inside of the image container. Okay, so we're gonna say location in, and then we put in here image container, which is gonna have slightly different coordinates than just the main system, right? But Again, we're we're moving things around that are inside of that container, so that's that's why we're gonna do that. Uh, and then you know. The, the math on this gets kind of a little, well, there's just a lot of, um, just a lot of uh, text in, to, to, in this if statement that we're eventually gonna write, where we basically just, you know, check if where we're touching down is inside of all the possible, you know, ranges within the head or outside of it, whatever, or emoji. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is set up a bunch of kind of shorter variables here. So we'll just say, uh, e top right for emoji and this will be a CG flow type variable and this is going to equal our uh, emoji uh, image dot frame dot origin dot y okay so that's where that begins at so that's the top of it right and then for the e bottom this is going to be our origin.y plus the emoji image dot frame dot size dot height. And let's just get, keep copying these out. So the left side then is going to be what? The origin dot x, right? Dot x. Here, copy that again. And then the, the right side of this is going to be the x plus the width. So we're going to say x plus the width. All right, and then once you have that, and of course we'll do the same thing for the saying in just a moment, but what we can do then is say if, and then our location dot y is greater than our e top, all right, and our Location dot y is less than e bottom. So maybe you can kind of see now why I'm just trying to compress these variables down to something a bit smaller. Uh, and our uh, e left. Sorry, I'm kind of. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you know what? I got to get these right. <laughs> okay, if we want location dot x is greater than. E left and also the location dot X is less than E right okay so take a moment to think about that it took me a little while to think about uh, but um, basically just detects whether or not we're touching down inside of the emoji image and in which case our image to transform is then going to become our emoji image right and Boom. Uh, let's do the same thing. Well, here, let's do this. Let's just copy all these guys. And I'll just change that to S, 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 S. This will be saying image. So, in some sense, we're going to kind of prioritize the head of the emoji or whatever um, because I'll put in here else if. So, basically, if. Um, if, if this, you know, gets is true, then we don't even worry about checking the other one, right? So this is just going to be S, S, 
as and then that'll be our saying image. Okay, we ready to give it a shot. All right, moving that around, and you can see moving that around. So let's go over here and rotate or scale. Well, either one's fine. And all right, so we're scaling that guy up. But then if I, oh well, that's right. I'm not. I keep thinking I can. And you know, we could set this up so you could just move at any time. I I got no problem with that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, obviously you can tell now that. So I've now made it so I can uh, scale over here, and then again just by selecting that over that way. All right, so should we should we make it so that you can move at any time? I hey, I got no problem with it. Let's uh let's do that. Let's try this again. Okay, so I'll go over to rotate, and you can still move these guys, right? Uh, the only thing we'd want to do is just uh, readjust the, um, you know, anytime you change your, between one of these two, is just change the, uh, the slider uh, values inside of there. So, uh, you know, if we, let's say if, Well, you know, we could even do, we could write if image to transform does not equal emoji image, then we'll set it to that. But then that kind of frees us up to, you know, not have to call something unnecessarily. And really, then all we have to do here is just uh, write if uh, current mode equals dot rotate, then we're going to say set up rotate mode. And again, this is going to be an else if statement. So else if current mode equals scale, set up scale mode, and do the same thing over here. Here we go. Okay, so let's mess with this guy. And so moving him around, moving that one around. Let's go over here to rotate. So I'll switch to this one now, and you can see that that changes. Switch to that one, that one changes. Let's, right? Much better. Send your creation. Do, do, do. And go back again. Sweet. Alrighty. Well, that f certainly feels like it's working well. Uh, let's jump over real fast to the, um, the press send function. And uh, again, like I was kind of saying before, if you wanted to make the image cont container that background color um, clear before sending or saving that um, that image uh, to the uh, uh, defaults. I, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I just tried it, and uh, let me show you what that looks like. And of course, you'd also want to do that down here at the bottom when you transition, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, there it is. It looks a little bit better, I think, than having the white background in there. So caption emoji. Uh, the only thing is, is that Oh boy. There you go. You'll just see it disappear, but you know, it gives people an idea that uh, they were just seeing kind of the frame area of what they could potentially send. All right, so good. We all good? Good lesson. Uh, if there's anything more to add to this hey, you, that you'd like to see, feel free to email me.